Hi. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back to my channel. I don't know if my lip liner is even, so we're going to fix that really quick. Is that better? Maybe. Like one I've done before. I just finished watching the documentary Lula Rich with Steve and I thought that it would be fun to kind of share my thoughts in a video longer than an Instagram story and then just direct people to this because I have some thoughts on it and I don't know if little 15 second clips would be enough or for me to be eloquent enough about how I feel because I do it is a little bit more nuanced than just like I love it or I hate it and I didn't really want to put it on Instagram per se, like in an IGTV or something, because I don't know. I'm just gonna do it here. So I wanted to talk about how I feel about MLMs in general and those feelings that were brought up while watching this documentary. It's about the rise and eventually fall of LuLaRoe, which, you know, spoiler alert, is still in business, unfortunately, but definitely is not thriving in the way that it once was. It's a very good documentary. It's on Amazon Prime if you want to watch it. So that's where you can find it. Also, if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and like this video, okay? Shameless plug. Let's talk about it. Lula Rich, Lula Row. I found out about Lula Row years ago when it started uh, because a friend of mine was selling it and I was helping her take photos for inventory and some things that she was doing and she was doing great with it and really loving it. I had no idea what it was, but she explained it to me and I don't know if that's the first time I ever heard of an MLM or first really understood what an MLM was, but I think it was because I remember thinking, wow, <laughs> these people are laughing all the way to the bank with this system of you have to sign up people and sign up people and it's like a thousand million dollar buy-in. I couldn't fathom it because I didn't even have the kind of money to do that kind of buy-in. And, and if I did, I would not be giving it to someone else that I didn't really know. Anyways, so I helped her. I went to one of the parties because I was really interested to see, even though like I didn't understand, the prints were like not cute. The shirts were like very expensive for being very basic. I, I truly was like baffled by the whole process. And this kind of spurred my interest in MLMs in general. And I would find out about more of them and I would research them. And I just never really shared my opinions on MLMs, which is spoiler alert, I hate them. I think they're predatory. I hesitated to share how I actually felt about them because I do know a lot of people who are part of MLMs. And I never want it to be an uncharitable response towards them because I totally totally understand the why of of getting into it. I understand that you desire community and that you want to have something that's your own, this idea that it's your own business. You want to belong. You want to make money. You want to be able to have financial freedom. I understand all of these desires because I myself searched for things outside of my full-time job to make extra money and continue to do so because first of all, I enjoy the creative process and second of all, I enjoy being paid for the creative process. So I understand and the desire and I never want to be uncharitable to the people who have joined MLMs because I feel for them I honestly do I think the creators of MLMs the people who are pushing the product who are getting people to join the MLM model itself which is a pyramid scheme don't even at me with that inherently predatory and it makes me so sad do I doubt that the 0.001% is making a large amount of money because they got in first, definitely don't doubt it because I've seen it. Not seen it personally, but I've seen the model and how it's set up and I understand. But do I also understand that that can't be replicated and at a certain point, you kind of max out the people that you can sell to? Uh-huh, of, of course. Have I also been the victim of this predatory behavior in people that I formerly, you know, considered acquaintances or friends or really enjoyed spending time with but was turned off to once I received messages through Facebook or Instagram about wanting to try their product or their thing or whatever, it made me feel guilted into trying certain things. It also was offensive at times. I remember a girl that I went to college with messaging me right after my miscarriages and after kind of sharing about how I was focusing on like health and fitness, not because of my miscarriages, okay, uh, because of PCOS, my struggle with weight, right, and some of these things, and like directly quoted that and was like, hey, I know that you said that you struggled with this and this and this and, you know, I would love for you to join our fitness group or whatever. 
And I was absolutely appalled. I was like so upset that that was their response to me who was going through something so traumatic. Join my weight loss group? Are you kidding me? And that's not even the only message I've ever received. It's always like the face creams and the makeup and the shake and whatever, okay? Do I think that every single product that is put out by every single MLM is crap? No. I mean, I've used essential oils before. Uh, I think that's the only one I tried because, again, I felt guilted into doing it. And I think, too, it's just I have no issue with people wanting to try to make money for their family. It's just sad. I understand all of the reasons that people do it, but it makes me sad. It makes me sad that no one will talk about it. It makes me sad that I feel like I can't speak my actual mind. And now that it's 2020 and I just don't care, like I'm actually speaking my mind. And I'm sure people will not like this opinion and I might lose followers and whatever. It's totally fine. If I am not your cup of tea, that is okay. But I am speaking the truth. I think that MLMs are set up to make you fail. I think they're inherently predatory. I don't think that they actually provide, you know, the business, the community, and the financial autonomy, financial freedom that you're looking for. And I think that most people's time would be better used looking for actual other ways to try to make money for their family. I feel like the time spent to find actual things that are flexible, that just give you money without having to make you go into debt for it, is a better option. There are better ways to do it than to hand someone who promises you something that is totally unachievable a large sum of money and or startup costs to, to start something that really is not yours, okay? That is reliant on you signing up other people or having a certain amount of product or inventory or purchasing a certain amount of, of things or, you know, keeping a sales quota, et cetera, et cetera. No, there are plenty of arguments and I know all the arguments. I've heard all the arguments and I still don't agree. And I still think that they're not very good arguments and I still think it's wrong. And I know that's a really hard thing to hear and I say it with compassion and with charity because I think a lot of people have had the wool pulled over their eyes. They've been promised all these things that seem so glittery and nice and fun and it's actually just really detrimental. Again, aside from my personal thoughts about M MLMs, I do want to get back to this documentary because I do think it's worth watching. If you've been in it, if you've never heard of an MLM, if you are really interested in MLMs and the whole like psychology and all the wildness behind it like I am, I do think it's a really interesting watch because this one specifically is just so evidently fueled by pride and greed. I mean, I mean, in the first few minutes, all you hear them say is money, 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 money. Like, obviously, that's their main and only motivation. And they're going to do whatever they need to do to get people to join. And they're going to, like, gaslight people up the waz all day long in order to be free from blame, which is just so sad to me. And people were losing their families and their livelihoods over promises that weren't kept. <laughs> about finances, about all this stuff, about quality product that wasn't, about uh, so many things. So, oh, I don't want this video to be a hundred million years long and I don't want to ramble. I wanted to say that if you, you know, are in an MLM, please don't come at me. I feel for you. I am hoping that you will find what you're really looking for. One other thing I did want to touch on is like people who would say to me, I am part of the 0.1% that does make a living off of this or do really well with this. And to that, I would say, good for you. At what cost? Who have you had to email? What relationship have you had to break or alter? Because you were asking them for stuff uh, to help keep you afloat financially, even if your intentions are good. I just really want people to ask themselves that question. That's fine. You can be successful. That's great. At what cost? And I would ask this arguably for anybody in any job where greed was the motivator, where money was the motivator, where, you know, you had to reach out to personal contacts uh, in order to essentially stay afloat, where you had to go into debt to quote unquote provide for your family or quote unquote own your business. It is not the same as taking out a business loan to start a business. It's literally not. So that's the only thing I would say. I just really want to know at what cost is your success for yourself, for your personal relationships, and for the long term. Like, what's the end goal? You're going to do this forever? What happens when you hit the quota and you have nobody else in your circle and everybody around you is now a salesperson and your competition is just like incapable 
of allowing you to continue financially. I just want to know. This is something they talked about in the documentary as well. Like they wanted the husbands to be financially free. I'm not trying to spoil the whole thing. I mean, even just what I'm saying doesn't spoil it. You should still watch it. It's still very good and way more thorough than I'm being. But essentially they were saying too, they wanted that the, the wives, they wanted the wives to get their husbands on board so that basically their whole livelihood, their whole income was tied to LuLaRoe. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I mean, I know, I think there was one or two that did it, but like putting all your eggs in that basket and then having something like this happen. And I don't think that just because you're part of a newer one or a prettier one or more fun one that you're exempt from being, you know, part of a storyline that's very similar to LuLaRoe. So those are my thoughts. That's how I feel. Again, I just wanted to say a disclaimer. This is mostly at my vitriol towards the MLM pyramid setup. The people who created them. Things that we overlook from founders of certain MLMs. Young Living, looking at you. <clears throat> and in no way am I trying to be uncharitable or, or upset towards people who are part of these because they joined for what they thought was the right reason. So that's how I feel. Would love to know your thoughts in the comments. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, you can find me on Instagram at the real Katie Waldow. I'll link it there as well, because again, I'm looking at my timer on this thing and it's like 14 minutes long. So I like, I don't know, should I make car chats a thing? I feel like I get like sassy in my car. I feel like I speak my mind in my car. I feel like it's silent in my car. All the things we love. A car chat video where I talk about my breastfeeding experience. I just kind of like talking in this space and I feel like I know I'm talking to myself but it makes me feel relaxed enough to just be like hey this is a conversation that I have had with Steve these are all the things that we talked about together Steve and I love him so much he was like hey I went on the LuLaRoe, LuLaRoe website after we watched this and they have a disclaimer from like the court case that they're going through and even though it's still alive and, and kicking and you can be a part of it which is just terrifying to me I just love that he went and did that so he like I wasn't even I was just like watching it while he was doing schoolwork and he got interested and we were just like talking about it anyways documentary are the best that's another thing if you have any documentary or podcast suggestion i love like anti-mlm stuff or anything that's just like interesting about stuff like this so let me know thanks for watching thanks for being here you're the greatest thanks for letting me speak my mind the end bye